Hi, welcome to this week's episode of The Pool Guy Show. This week I'm going to be talking about everything that deals with being cheap or being a cheapskate. And this will cover everything from being cheap with your pool uh, to try and look for bargains and everything you get and how this can sometimes hurt you more than help you. And if you do pool service for a living, I'm going to give you some tips to deal with customers that um, are on the cheap side. This week's podcast is brought to you by InyoPools.com. Inyo Pools has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts since 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. This podcast is also brought to you by Riptide Pool Vacuum System. Riptide is a powerful vacuum system that will help you pick up large debris off the bottom of a pool. So if you do pool service for a living, the Riptide is a perfect tool to add to your arsenal. It will also save you a lot of time each day as you clean your pools. You can find more about the Riptide at www.riptidevac.com. So I think the problem with being cheap in America stems from the culture. Um, when you go into the store, everything is on sale. And when you purchase something, you always see the retail price. And then you'll see something slashed out. And this will be the sale price. And Amazon.com is notorious for this. They'll show you a camera online for maybe $800. And it'll be slashed out and it'll say $499. So we have this mentality that we always want to be saving money on everything. And I got to tell you, though, with as far as it goes with pools, um, saving money is not always the best way to approach it. I think doing your due diligence and trying to get a fair price for something is probably the best way to look at it. But being cheap with your pool is going to come back and hurt you in the long run. And I think I'll emphasize the point by pointing out that my friends in Australia tell me that the products that they pay for and also any kind of service is not what you would consider a good rate as we pay here in the States. And I think, again, it's a cultural thing. You know, in the U.S., everything has to be cheap or a bargain. And other parts of the world don't have this kind of mentality. So uh, countries like Australia, um, everything is marked up pretty high. If you look at any Australian websites for pool supplies, you'll see that everything is pretty expensive over there, considering um, expensive compared to what we pay here in America. And again, it's just the way they market things to you to make it look like you're saving money. But there's really no way around the fact that anything related to your pool is going to cost more than what you think it would cost in any market. So being cheap can hurt you in many ways. The first thing that being cheap can hurt you with is if you're having a pool remodeled or constructed. And I'll give you a good example of this. I have a customer that I refer a good remodeler to. And he didn't like the initial bid. I think it was around 18000 to remodel his pool. So he hired a non-licensed contractor to do his pool. And it was a, a colored plaster, dark colored plaster pool, almost black. And the guy that was doing the pool was unlicensed, probably not very experienced, but uh, they ran out of dye in the plaster. So the steps of the pool are a different color than the pool itself. And then they found out that there was cracks in the plumbing. And they had to redo the whole pool. So actually it cost them probably more to hire this cheap non-licensed person than using the licensed contractor. And, and there's a reason why they're licensed and they're contractors. They're not going to do something like this. And the same goes with pool service. You know, if you get the bargain pool service guy, chances are, um, you know, they're not going to show up week to week or they're not going to know what they're doing. So when you're pricing things like that, you want to get multiple bids, multiple pool service companies come by and look at your pool. And you don't want to go with the cheapest one, and you may not want to go with the most expensive one either, um, but you want to be reasonable and maybe pick someone in the middle. Or you may want to go with the, the higher price person. And for me, you know, in my case, I have uh, rental properties, and um, I have a really good plumber, and he's not the cheapest plumber. He's actually on the high end of plumbers. But I can tell you one thing, when I call him for a problem with my property, he'll show up and he'll fix it. And I don't have to be there to supervise him. That's how good he is. He can just do whatever and then just uh, tell me how much it is. And it's kind of um, nice to pay for uh, that kind of service. And you do pay a higher price for the best service. But I think it's for peace of mind and for convenience. Um, you know, you save 
$40 and you get something substandard done or you save $100 and you have to go back and redo it. To me, it just doesn't make sense to do that. So when I hire someone, I don't really look for the price. I look for the quality of the work, the reviews online. And if the price is higher than their competitors, it doesn't really bother me if they do a good job. So a homeowner maintaining their own pool, a lot of the times they're going to look for the cheapest chemicals for their pool. And typically the cheap chemicals are going to have reactions. Uh, for instance, if you use the cheap dichlor shock, not the granular, it's going to cloud up your pool. It's a lot cheaper than the standard shock, and it's cheaper than liquid chlorine. But I say spend the money, buy the liquid chlorine, even though it's more expensive than the bag of shock. In the long run, it's a better product and a better sanitizer. The same goes with anything that goes with the pool equipment. You know, if you really want to get a bargain and get a small filter for your pool, um, you can do that, but it's not going to filter your pool correctly. And if you want to get one of those $89 automatic suction side cleaners, chances are it's not going to work in your pool very effectively. I've seen some of those on my pool route. Um, it's pretty hilarious. They, the hoses are so thin that you can you know, squeeze them with your hands and cleaners pretty much fall apart after about six months or eight months. So you end up spending more money replacing that $89 cleaner with a more expensive cleaner later. So my suggestion to you is to not look at the price point as far as pool products go, but look at quality and look at what they actually do for you. Um, a lot of times I tell people, put a Pool RX unit in your pool, it'll save you money on your chlorine and make your pool clear. And I run it in my pool also, and my pool is pretty much crystal clear every week. And I'm running my salt system at 40% right now. So it does save you money in the long run, but when you see the price of it, it's like $70 online for the uh, unit. Uh, right away you're thinking that you're paying too much money for a product. Look at it and the fact that it's going to save you money and it's going to keep your pool clear all season long. Actually, the $70 is a real bargain. So the price point is not an effective way to price out your pool for any kind of chemicals or equipment. And I, I talked last week about using cheap pool cleaning equipment. And a lot of times people will look for the cheapest thing when they go to the store. They'll buy a $12 skimmer or they'll order online a really cheap vacuum and hose. And you're going to have to replace it anyway because it's not going to work effectively. So look for something that has good reviews. Don't really look at the price point. Everything you're going to get for your pool is going to be expensive. And to save $20 here, you know, $30 there, in the long run, it's not really going to move the needle in your finances. And you're going to get a much better product if you just don't look at the price point, but look at the quality of the product itself. And I also tell this to pool service professionals that are looking uh, for products for their route that don't get the cheap pole, don't get a cheap net. It's not going to last. Just invest in good equipment and your day will be a lot easier. I clarify the difference between a bargain price and a low price item. So there's what's considered cheap, which is something that's a poor quality. And then there's something that is a lower price item. So for instance, the Pentair Superflow VS pump is one of the lower price variable speed pumps. But in fact, it's one of the best variable speed pumps. Very easy to program. You can connect it to either 110 volts or 220 volt uh, timer, which is pretty rare in the industry. I think that's the only uh, pump that you can do that with as to date with this podcast. And the price point is a lot lower than most variable speed pumps. So you may think that it's made poorly, but in fact, it's made really well. It's really reliable and it's a great pump. It just has a lower price point than the competitors. So it's not technically a cheap variable speed pump. It's an affordable variable speed pump. And there's a difference in that. So there are a lot of knockoff uh, variable speed pumps that are uh, really not, I wouldn't suggest putting them in your pool. But if you do the research and look at the reviews of different variable speed pumps, and really don't look at the price point. If you see one that's a lot lower, it doesn't mean that it's uh, cheaply made. It just means that um, the components are more affordable and therefore they can sell to the consumer for less money. And it's a great pump and it is affordable. So there are products like that. And same goes with pool cleaners. You know, you can get a really good suction side cleaner for about $150. It would be the Zodiac Ranger. It was about 60 or $70 more than you would pay for one of those throwaway $89 cleaners. And this cleaner is really good. Um, in fact, 
Zodiac has the Ranger as the old G2 cleaner that I used to use all the time on my, my route. And the Australian market, the G2 cleaner looks a lot like the Ranger. And the way they marketed it is for above ground pools only. However, um, I use them in in ground pools all the time. It's very durable. Um, it's just basically like the Zodiac G2 was in the pools. And it's a great bargain cleaner for about 150, 160 bucks online or at your pool store. So again, it's affordable, but it's not cheap. And there's a lot of products like that you'll find in the pool industry that are very affordable, but not cheaply made. And of course, if you really want to spend the money and get one of the better or best suction tie cleaners on the market, you can go with the Hayward uh, Pool Cleaner or the Penta Rebel. Those are two exceptionally uh, well-made cleaners and they're priced about $350 to $400. So you can see how the price point goes up when you're looking at a little higher quality cleaner. But you know, the Zodiac Ranger uses the same hoses that the Zodiac G2 uses, and that's another $100 for that cleaner. So you have to really shop around and look to see the price point of different items uh, before you purchase them, kind of compare them with similar items in the category. Another thing that I notice that customers that are a little bit uh, tight or penny pinching will do is that they'll just run their pools for two hours a day, three hours a day. And in the long run, you're actually hurting yourself because the water quality is not going to be good. You'll be spending a lot more money on trying to keep it clear. If you really wanted to save money on electricity, um, you know, save up and get a variable speed pump. It'll pay for itself within a year or two. And they're very long lasting and you'll save electricity that way. So by trying to save electricity by running your pool for the shortest amount of time, you're actually creating a dangerous situation too for any swimmers that may use it because the water is not going to be um, healthy to swim in running for two or three hours a day. And I'm talking about an average sized pool set for two or three hours, you know, 18,000 gallons. And chances are that's just not going to cut it. So you really can't be cheap with your pool. And it's going to cost you money to run your pool if you have a standard speed pump. It's going to cost you money for chemicals for your pool. It's going to cost you money for cleaning equipment for your pool. And there's really no way around it. It's kind of like your vehicle. You know, you have to pay for the, the insurance and the maintenance and the upkeep and gas every week. And the pool's the same way. Every week you got to pay for the chemicals, which would be similar to the gas. Upkeep would be a repair on any kind of uh, pool equipment. And you got to keep it running smoothly. So you have to invest money into that particular product, which is the pool. And I really can't emphasize enough that when you walk into a pool store or if you're looking online for products, just don't look at the bargain priced items, you know, skip over those and get ones that have reliable reviews that you know are effective. On my channel, I have a lot of products that I review that are effective. Someone asked me, um, where are, are all the videos of the products that don't work? And I told them, basically, if something doesn't work, I don't film it, I don't promote it, and I'm not going to put a negative review of a product out there because it's a waste of my time. There's so many other products that I can focus on that are good for the consumer. And these negative products don't last very long on the market. Um, they'll get a bunch of reviews that will pretty much ruin the product and it'll be pulled off the market. I'm not in the business of bad mouthing one single product or manufacturer, but if you do email me and you have a question about a product, I will tell you straight out if it's good or not um, in a personal email. So before you purchase something, you can definitely email me and I'll definitely direct you to get the right product for that category. Now let me just flip it over a little bit and talk to those in the industry that are dealing with customers that are cheapskates, tight. Um, a lot of these customers want the cheapest service and they don't want to do anything to their pool. A lot of them are really poor at paying their bills on time. I wish we could have a sticker that we could put on the time clock that can signify that this customer is tight. Um, I don't know what we would put on there, but it would be great to have something that would warn um, us in a profession that this person is not gonna uh, be a good customer in the long run. So, and that leads me to kind of to the solution of that is that you really can't change someone who's really cheap. Um, you can talk to them, explain to them why they have to spend the money on their pool. But if it's ingrained in them that they want everything as a bargain, you know, everything on sale, everything half off, um, there's not much you could do with someone like that. You know, that's the kind of person that will go to the mechanic and try to get them to do work at lower cost and shave off money on labor. And it's just not an effective way to do business. Um, you know, I just had my engine and my truck redone uh, earlier in the year, and my mechanic charged me $5,000 to put a new engine in my Frontier. It's a 2005 
a Nissan Frontier. And, um, you know, people tell me, oh, I could have got the engine cheaper somewhere else and got it installed cheaper. But you know what? My mechanic, you know, his sign says Nissan Datsun Specialist. And you pay for that. And if you don't know what a Datsun is, you're not old enough. But, you know, this guy's been around long enough to have a Datsun on his sign. And he's done work for me before. I've never had a problem. And so when I need a new engine put in, I just went to him and, and got him to do it. And it wasn't a matter of price point. It was a matter of getting something that's going to last and getting something that's going to be done well. So if you're going to be trying to cut and be cheap and bargain on everything, um, you're going to get what you pay for, basically. So if you're servicing someone's account and they're just constantly on you, one of the guys in my group was saying that a customer only wants his cartridge filter clean once a year, and he posted a photo of it, and it was just really compacted with dirt. It was really actually pretty hilarious. Um, the pool's not going to run well with that kind of attitude. Um, and also, you know, they don't want to pay for extra chemicals in their pool and they don't want to pay for any kind of repairs. They want everything patched. You know, you really can't do much with a customer like that, except kind of wean them off your route as you get uh, better paying customers and better customers. And then you kind of cut the low hanging fruit off and just let someone else deal with them. And there's a lot of people out there that probably shouldn't have pool service that do, um, because they're just so tight. They should be doing it themselves. And, um, but they're not, and so we have to deal with that. So basically, you know, with customers that just are really cheap, don't want anything done, um, you can service their pools as you're starting out, and you need them to build your business. You can't not have that income and kind of, you know, take it with a grain of salt and realize that as you build up your pool route and as you get more experience and better clients, you can drop the ones that are just really a bother to take care of and don't want to do anything. So... You know, there's. I just think it's the mentality of our culture in the in the uh, in the states here that um, everything has to be a bargain. You know, you buy a new car, you know, you you go there and you look for the one that has eight thousand off the sticker price. So, and I again, I'm gonna emphasize the point that um, cheap is not always good, and you can't have that attitude that you're gonna save money in everything everywhere. Um, there's some things like your pool care. I mentioned the person that had the pool constructed, remodeled, and they botched it. Um, I have photos of it on my computer, of the really poor job they did. Um, and he ended up spending more money than when he would hire um, a professional contracted builder. And, you know, when you see the bid from a builder, a lot of that is the fact that he knows what he's doing and he's going to do a good job and you don't have to redo anything. So there's some built in insurance there when he bids the pool. Um, for you. So keep that in mind too when you're, if you're looking for bids on anything, even with equipment installs, you want to go with the person that, you know, knows what they're doing and you have to pay for that. Like my plumber that I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I pay a good amount of money for his services, uh, more than most people would charge, but his work is uh, superb and I don't mind paying for it. So it's just a matter of, I think, the way you look at things and, you know, I'm going to keep this focus on the pools and have, having a pool is going to be expensive no matter how you look at it and there's many ways to save money you know you can do the BBB method of pool care which is highly effective and very affordable um, but there's ways there's also things that you have to spend money on if your filter goes out you're gonna to have to replace it with a good size filter if your pump burns out I highly suggest getting a variable speed pump and paying the 800 to $1,000 for that pump because it'll really pay for itself. And any other kind of equipment that will go out, um, you're gonna have to pay to get it replaced. And, you know, get the premium equipment. I always want, I always suggest getting the best equipment at the fairest price. And, you know, the attitude with the pool shouldn't be how much money can I save every year on the cost of the pool by cutting this and cutting that or getting something cheap here. The attitude should be is, how can I maintain my investment, which is my pool in my backyard, and maintain it in the best possible way that if I ever do sell my house, the pool is going to look really good and keep the house resale value high? Or how can I keep my pool so that I can jump in there every, anytime I want to use it and it'll be swim ready? Also, the safety issue aspect of it, if you don't maintain your pool correctly, if you're being cheap with your filter, cheap with the chemicals, cheap with the maintenance, if you're having a pool party, chances are... Um, a lot of people are going to get ear infections, they're going to get sick, and it's just not going to be good in the long run, not safe. 
Um, so, you know, the pool is a body of water that needs to be maintained so that you can actually use it safely. And I would suggest spending the money, reasonable amount of money every year on your pool costs and not always trying to look for that bargain because in the end it's going to hurt you in more ways than one. So if you need more resources or help with your pool, you can check out my website at swimmingpoollearning.com. On my website, I have an ebook available. I just recently updated the ebook this month, where it now has uh, scannable QR codes in there uh, with over 60 videos. So if you're reading the book on the computer, um, you can scan it with your phone, and it'll take you to a video. So it's kind of a convenient way of making use of all your devices with the ebook. And the ebook's are 230 pages full of uh, articles on chemistry, automatic cleaners, pool maintenance, everything you need to know about your pool is in this ebook and is for sale for a low price of $9.99. If you service pools for a living and you want to expand your business or if you're just starting out and learning the business, you may want to consider joining my coaching site. On this site, for $10 a month, you can text me, and for $20 a month, you can call and text me. I also have a few homeowners on this site that are calling and texting me. And it's a great way for you as a homeowner to get quick one-on-one um, -on -one help from a pool service professional. Um, if you don't have anyone in the area you can contact, you can definitely join my coaching site and I can help you with your, um, your pool. If you're remodeling it or if you just need help maintaining it, definitely consider joining me on my site. And as a um, bonus, you'll get a copy of the ebook for free. And if you do, pool service, you also get a 10% discount on your SPPA insurance. So definitely check out the coaching site if you're a homeowner or a pool service professional. So I hope you found this podcast helpful. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.